What up, y'all? I'm Christopher Markland, and welcome to this week's review of Ready to Love. As y'all know, uh, we are on episode five, I think it is. And in this episode, the ladies came with a plan on each one of their dates. I mean, it's coming down to the wire. So now it's really time to see who is and who isn't ready to love. And that's what this episode was all about. Obviously, we've been feeling each other. Yes. I mean, I appreciate I'm, you opening listen. up your home. Long time coming. Who yeah. have you had some one-on-one -on -one dates with? I've only had one with Alexis. So did you have a good time? Huh? <clears throat> uh, Do you like her? I'm a little parched. I'm just trying to drink some of this lemonade. That's all. But did you have a good date with Alexis? It was. Divine had a plan um, when it came to dealing with London. She knows that Alexis is her only competition when it comes to London. So when they were together, he asked her point blank, yo, what are you going to do about us? Now she didn't ask him about, so you're feeling Alexis and no, she said, okay, what is it with between me and her? What is it gonna be? He said, yo, it's you all day. So with that, she's like, hey, you have a decision to make. They say, okay, London, pick one person you wanna ride off in the sunset with. Who is mm -hmm. that gonna be? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, hold, hold on, hold on. I wasn't prepared to truly answer this question today. You already know you're my ride or die. So it's me? Of course it would be you. Okay. I mean, why would you even question that? You need to break up. Right? From what we saw at the end of the last episode, Devon was ready to walk away from the show because, you know, she wasn't uh, about being, you know, the second choice or whatever the case may be. Now, with this episode, same thing uh, applies. You can see that she's really on a mission. That's why she asked uh, London, hey, between you, you know, you and me, what's going on? His response is, yo, you're my ride or die. He made a decision, or at least he gave her a decision. Now, maybe is it what she just wanted to hear, what he said in that moment? I, I don't know, but based on the answer that he gave, the only response that she could be was like, hey, well, if that's the case, you need to break up with her. It was a little bit of a turnoff. I'm not gonna say a red flag, it's her wanting me to really commit. It's still early on. Hey, we, we, we're not here to talk about that right now. This is outside the ring. Right. We, we, we gotta be realistic. You I know? know. I mean, this is our first one-on-one. -on -one. All right. <laughs> I rocks with London, that's my dude. But I can't necessarily, I ain't really feeling him on this one because she asked the question, he gave the answer, which is, hey, you're my ride or die. So now you can't then be like, oh man, that's, you know, it's not a red flag. No, you, you can't necessarily do that. Now, I do agree with them that if that's their first real one-on-one -on -one date or interaction, then yeah, that may be moving things a bit far. Also, it kind of goes against the premise of the show that, hey, you make a decision. But she asked the question, you said that she was your ride or die, so. I have something for you. Oh yeah? I'll be right back. I let on that I forgot his birthday. I would never forget your birthday. You're too sweet. And I just wanted to tell you that just in this short time, how much you mean to me. Oh, man, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You're gonna make me sit up here and tear up, girl. <laughs> I appreciate it, for real. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here right quick. London has real affection for both Alexis and Divine. And one of the things that I like about the dude is that he has not led either lady on. Um, if they ask, you know, when he's with that person, you know, he's real with them. He lets them know that, hey, I'm, I am feeling the other person and I'm still going through this path on this journey to love. You gotta respect that. You know, he's not being slimy with it. He's not, you know, flirting with one. And, you know, he's, he's being real with it. I know that I have the attention of some of the other guys and I'm kind of playing off of that. So I invited Jimmy. It was time to start asking Jimmy those serious questions. I strongly believe that Alexis knew how Jimmy would respond to her. By that, I mean that she knows that Jimmy isn't strong enough to handle a woman like her. Now, when I say handle, I'm not mean Ike Turner or nothing like that. What I am saying is, it takes a strong man to deal with a strong woman. And, you know, London obviously has those strengths. Jimmy, definitely not. Um, just he, he's just not able to deal from what I can see he's just not able to deal with a woman like Alexis but can he be serious what's up what's up what's up Fly. no he cannot Jimmy's entrance into the restaurant where Alexis was seating indicated just in my who he is right 
you have if you have an audience with the queen and that's basically what happened because there was a lot of power moves that were being played right there um and i don't know if jimmy saw it or if he just i don't know but anyway he instead of coming in you have an audience with the queen right so instead of you coming in with the power and swag of a, a swagger of a knight or a prince or another king instead jimmy came in there with this jokey joke sh just off the rip it just set the whole tone for how their interaction would be keep in mind right at every date on every date that we've seen with the men and the women the guy has been there first which allows the woman to walk in to make an entrance right remember that nina tried that at the uh, pool party where all the guys were there, so she came in late looking, you know, with her, her, her uh, bikini on, her bathing suit looking good, right? She wanted to make an entrance. It's no different than when a, a traditional wedding, right? The groom is already at the altar and the bride walks to him. Why? So she can make an entrance, so people can see her dress, see her, how beautiful she is, because that's her day. It's no different than uh, on this date. Um, Alexis was there on purpose because she wasn't making an entrance for Jimmy. She basically was the parole officer based on how Jimmy's behavior has been. And Jimmy was coming to her and that would have been his way to get back into the good graces of the other lady, I believe. So Alexis, she set the tone for that. Are you open to having more children? Yes. I got a little boy. I want a little girl. How many kids do you want? Like three. Really? Mm -hmm. So how soon do you want these kids? Like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You okay? Oh, what you want to be family for? Because I'm the only child. <laughs> I don't have time to waste. I'm not going to compromise. When you have a kid, you have to be, like, there. So in terms of traveling and stuff like that, who going to watch these three kids? You can take your children on the road with you. OK, but yeah, oh, yeah, OK, to Disneyland. But I'm talking about when we go to Italy or Paris or something with some romantic yeah. stuff. You can bring the children. You can have a nanny as well. Is that stressing you out? As long as we can afford it. I hope you got your savings plan together. Oh, wow. <laughs> I could not be with a man that doesn't have his stuff together. And I'm kind of at the point now where I do want to be married and have children. I don't want to have just one. If God blesses me with more than one child, I'm going to go in that direction. Alexis is straight up playing with Jimmy at this point, not for amusement, but really just to see how he can respond to the things that she's throwing at him. He's obviously nervous based on how much damn water and lick, just he's drinking everything in front of him. So she sees that, you know, he doesn't really cover his body language well. You can read it all over him. So she's basically seeing how he responds. Now, are they gonna go travel pa to Paris with the kids or go to Italy with kids? Yeah, we all know that that is a daunting thing to do. Hell, just packing up the car and I'm in Atlanta and going to say, damn, Jacksonville, a five hour drive is a pain in the ass. Can you imagine flying 10 plus hours across the Atlantic to, yeah, we all know that that's difficult. But I think that what she's trying to see in that moment is, hey, you know, she says, hey, we can go to Paris with the kids instead of Jimmy. Oh, shit, how are we going to do that? Well, you know, shit. OK, how can we do that? How can we be a Bay, uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce type power couple and make it together? You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I, he, remember, the first episode, he claimed to be the top listing agent in Atlanta. All right. If I'm in real estate, I know if that's what you claim to be, then you're you're saying that, hey, I'm a powerful man. I, I, I can we can make these things happened not once did he and say that hey you know what yo we can do that if you and I are together we can do this instead it's like oh how are we gonna do that y'all I don't think any woman wants to hear that from her man instead she wants to be like you know I it's more like yo shit we can do that how can you and I do this together and not once did he instill that sense of confidence in her do you feel like that I really like you yes I don't want to be giving you vibes that you're not receiving. To me, I have been perceived as thirsty. What does thirsty mean? Thirsty means staying on the phone with you for two hours. That's not thirsty to me. Do you stay on the phone with guys for two I hours? I do. I think it's a man showing a woman that he's interested in her. Cool. So I got to call you more. Check. More than, more than a text. I would appreciate a phone call. OK. Yeah. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm just starting to feel like it was like her way or the highway. This was the first time that I really came to an awakening that she is not who I thought. I need to speed up with, you know, showing that, yes, I'm interested okay. in you. I did not know that phone calls meant that much to you. 
I'm just really tired of the Alexis show. I got to the point where I realized, dang, I need Kimber to take me back. And Jimmy is pretty much going through this, using the same MO. He's expressed an interest in a, in a woman, whether it's Kimber, in this case, Alexis. So he's like, hey, you, you know, I just wanted to let you know that I like you, all right? So because he's expressed an interest and because he's verbalized it, that in his mind should be it. Hey, I like you. Because remember, he said this several times with nephew Tommy, I like who likes me. Okay, fine. Just because you like somebody, then that doesn't mean that they necessarily like you in return and they damn sure don't have to like the things that you do. Um, he can't necessarily hold up under pressure that the women are bringing to him, especially a strong woman. Once again, be it Kimber and Alexis. So he's like, hey, uh, he just asked Alexis, you know, just want to let you know, you know, make sure that you know that I do like you, right? Her response is yes. What she didn't say was, you know what? Yes, and I like you too. So for him, it's like, oh, okay, well, I just said I like you. Does she like me? And that's why you see the whole thing turn. Not only was she giving him the business, asking him those questions, but now it's like, I just told you I like you, and you're not saying you like me? His ego, his, I don't know what to call it, but as far as he's concerned, it's not going to like. It's not going to work, excuse me. He wants a woman, from what I've seen, to love and, 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 and respect him because he has expressed an interest in them, not because he's earned it. Let me ask you this. When you think about Re, it's like, damn, but Re, boo, boo, boo. You think about Tani, it's like, Tani, da, da, da. Like, what are those things, like those attributes that just got you so torn between, like, the two of us? Well, for one thing, when Tanya and I are together, I mean, it's almost like she she's giving me her all. And she's really, you know, showing me who she is, mm -hmm. but you know, with you, it's pretty much like I can tell that you you're holding back. Mm -hmm. You know, and one thing about me, I, I don't, am. I can I don't like closed in people. You know, I like those people to express themselves and say, "Well, look, this is communicate." I ain't went nowhere. No, you hadn't. I'm not between you and somebody else. No, no, you, I'm no, here. I understand oh, okay. that. I understand that. But you got one foot in and one foot out, and I'm trying to get both feet in. Reva is another example of someone that once they have the person in front of them, they're asking about that other person. Now, there's a difference between when you have that person in front of them, you ask them, hey, who are you choosing, me or her or me or him? You know, it's that kind of thing um, that um, Divine did. She's like, yo, who are you choosing? There's a difference. Divine is, I mean, excuse me, uh, Reva in this case is like, so why do you like her? And, you know, w w you know, no, you have his attention, all right? If he said, hey, it's between, in this case, Reva and Tandy, well, you have Mario right there. Have a date. Start building those connections. Start working through the things to make sure that if it is a, a choice, if you will, which I don't really think it is, but if it's a choice, then the choice is easy because of the connections based on the interactions that you've had. Right, we got to get to know each other more. We got to get to know each other better. But she's still bringing up my connection with Tundi. You know what? Forget all that. I need you to come focus on me. In, in this particular case, Reva did not take advantage of the fact that Mario was right there with her. Instead, they, they had more of a conversation conversation about why Mario likes Tandy, which in reality is reinforcing why Mario likes Tandy, not why he should be with Reva. How long have you been single? I was seeing someone for three years, and he actually asked me to marry him. I told him yes. Okay. I reneged on that. And he was way too insecure. Okay. I never gave him a reason not to trust okay. me, right? And that pushed me away. I've never been an insecure type chick. I'm not doing, going through your phone. I'm not, if I got to do all of that, we just probably don't need to be together. I have nothing but respect for Reva when it comes to that. There are so many people that move forward in relationships that they know are problematic. They see the red flags. And there are four things that I've always said in every relationship that you got to have. Sex, communication, finances, and trust. If you don't trust the person that you're with, or if they don't trust you, Sooner or later, things will fall apart. Uh, Reva just, you know, spoke about the things. She's like, oh, I don't go through your phone. I don't do all of those things that display that I don't trust you. And if you have someone that's doing it to you and you're like, oh, but I love he and, and she's so fine. And then sooner or later, what's going to happen is the relationship is going to elevate, elevate to the point that once it does collapse and fall apart, man, it's going to be so much damage and destruction because you knew the situation, right? And now 
if you stay in a relationship with someone that, that, that either doesn't trust you or you don't trust them, pretty much all you're going to have is a resentful relationship where that person, they got to check in every five minutes or they can't leave the house or they, you know, that person's, well, it takes you 5.8 second minutes to get home from work today. It took you five, five minutes, 30 seconds. Where were you? You know, that kind of BS. That's not a good situation. So I got much respect for Le for Reva for walking away from a marriage that was showing all of the red flags that it was gonna be a problem. You want some chips? I certainly do. Okay, so when you're dating. You got some ground beef to go on them? No, look now. Got some cheese? No, look now. Got sour cream? You, uh, this is chips and salsa and margaritas. Not lobster and steak, Carrie. This is not a full meal. Just get in here and have fun. I don't know why, but Carrie just seemed real uncomfortable with his date with um, Kimber. Now, I'm not sure if it's because of, you know, the, the past stuff dealing with um, Reva and the whole texting thing, or if it's a case of um, Kimber was the one that was assigned to let him know that, hey, man, you're on the cusp of leaving. I, I, I don't know, but throughout their whole interaction, he just seemed real uncomfortable, real, just, just a lot of nervous energy. I'm big on vibe, mm -hmm. mannerism, how you carry yourself. Communication is one of the three key components of any long-lasting relationship. Mm -hmm. And so many things can get misinterpreted in text messages, right? I'm Carrie, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> Yo, man, Carrie is a mature dude, right? A very mature cat, and he just needs to relax and tone it down some, if he can. I don't know, maybe that's just his personality. He really comes across real deaconish, real... You know, I know he's got a sense of humor, but it's just something about how he presents. Um, I know that he's still upset, uh, for lack of a better word, with how the, the whole texting thing with Reva, because I know he was feeling her and he expressed that. Um, I just know that, you know, also he's another example. Once again, focus on the person in front of you. He was talking more about texting and all that, and you can tell that he was hinting um, when he was talking about adulting, um, he was hinting at what happened between him and Reva. Bruh, you've got Kimber in front of you. You got the chips, you got the salsa, you got the margaritas. Enjoy the moment as instead of focusing on what happened in the past. You have the one-on-one, -on -one, use that interaction to grow and develop with that person. We get some one-on-one -on -one time, we haven't had that yet. We have not. Yeah. Well, it took you long enough, you know, uh, so. Like when I was around you, it's just like like your energy. It was kind of drawing me to you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I mean, we would lock eyes yeah. often, yeah. but you were kind of like. You well, know, again, you know. Slow dragon. You know, <laughs> you, you, all of the court jesters were surrounding the queen, and I was like, okay, when they get done with their performances, <laughs> then I'll come and move them out the way and, and see what's up. Yeah. With me, I'm all action, and I need to see and not just hear that a guy has a connection with me. I need to feel it. I can feel what Brent is saying to a point. Yo, if you wanna eat, you need to step up to the plate because if not, ain't gonna be nothing left. You're gonna be taking a piece of bread and sopping it up in an empty bowl, bro. If you wanna eat, you gotta step up. Look at how London did it. <laughs> I might need to take you on a quick excursion oh, real quick. Okay, I need to get with her real quick, fast, and in a hurry because this shark's in bloody water and I'm not playing any games. All right, now I'm gonna hold you. Okay. I love someone who could make a woman smile, can take a woman by her hand and pull her away from the crowd. London commanded my attention and I appreciate that in a man. Why don't you catch me if I fall? I got you. Okay. I got you. <laughs> I think you need to come with your boy real quick off in this kitchen though, you know? See the difference? London moves in. With Alexis, he pulled her to the side and he made his move. With uh, Divine, he pulled her to the side and made his move. Yeah, she started stabbing meat. But anyway, you see, that's how London operates. If you want to be with a woman, you have to let it be known that I want to be with the woman. Yes, he may move slow. Yeah, that may be how he operates. However, sooner or later, you have got to make an aggressive move and show that, hey, I'm here. I want you. Let's do this. But you really have to be completely open. Listen, I always say you definitely need to try out a few flavors before you choose one. Oh, is that what, is yeah. that what you say? I don't like to be rushed, and I will not be rushed. If you're not going to go after me and be aggressive, we may not have a connection. Part of the game of dating 
is the chase, right? Um, Alexis knows how to play the game. Um, with the chase between a man and a woman, he has to pursue her and she has to be pursued. Now, if you're chasing somebody and, you know, or you're the person being chased, you know how to modulate how fast you go, right? How fast you're moving away from the person chasing you. You want them to know that, yeah, I'm still here. I know you're chasing me and I want you to keep chasing me. That don't mean you move too far apart, but that also doesn't mean that you let them get too close either. It's a balance and that's the game of dating. Alexis knows that and Brent has not shown that he has wanted to even engage in the chase and damn sure hasn't engaged in the game. This date has been a success. I mean, I think me and Alexis have this authentic vibe thing going on. So yeah, that was fun. Right now, I just, I feel like you were not the guy for me. It's always amazed me um, how two people in the same situation can see things so differently. Um, Alexis is like, yo, it's a wrap, I'm done. Whereas Brent was like, yo, we had a good date, whatever. I'm not sure if he's just being positive or, or if he just wasn't reading Alexis properly and completely misread the situation. I feel great that Darren and I have the connection that we have. Let me get you a real yeah. yeah. You don't get no touch on What is going on here? My goodness. <laughs> we could be in a room full of people, but it just seemed like it's just he and I. We really haven't seen too much about Darren and Ashima's interactions with each other, but one thing I will say is this, Ashima has always been confident with her interactions with Darren. Whenever they're together, there's a lot of, you know, touching, a lot of um, intimacy between them, and the conversations have always been flowing. So it's, it's just a good chemistry that they have. And every time you see them in, in the uh, mixers afterwards, she's always just been confident in that, yeah, it's Darren. Even though, you know, there have been other people that have tried to step in, whether it's Aisha, whether it's Nina, Ashima's always just been comfor comfortable and confident in how her and Darren are moving forward and progressing. Absolutely. Welcome, welcome, so, welcome. Uh, you came ready. One thing that I really love about Carrie is he's a really good listener. So he plans his date because I have not been bowling in a very long time. Couple things, right? If a dude shows up with his own bowling ball and some carry-on luggage, yeah, y'all in for a night, because that cat there can bowl. That's a bowler right there. This dude brought his own ball, y'all. Second, both Carrie and Alexis have said that they prefer phone calls over texts. So what that means is if you listen to the person that you are pursuing or you know dating whatever there's no excuse for them to for y'all to go on a date and, and you to be like uh, so what you want to do if you listen to what that person's telling you that you will know exactly how to plan a date for y'all to go out and enjoy an evening together um alexis said that you know she just mentioned that hey i haven't been bowling in a while and hot damn it now they're bowling you feeling about this right here you know i mentioned to him that it's been a while since i've been bowling oh wow and Shows me that he's paying attention. And listen. And he's right. Carrie is paying attention to me. We've built a foundation. He is a man that's uh, worth exploring. So if you listen, you'll have date night ideas. And the third thing is, Carrie also took an easy um, rule of thumb when it comes to dating. Do something that you enjoy doing, all right? He enjoyed bowling, obviously, because my man brought his carry-on luggage. So you know he enjoys bowling. And then he heard her say, hey, I haven't done it. So guess what? If you're doing something that you enjoy doing anyway, what you're doing is you're bringing that person into your world. You're giving them the opportunity to know you, to know more about you, to see how you interact in your space where you're comfortable and confident. It, it, it's real simple, y'all. You don't have to, oh, let's try something new, something different. At first, do something that you're comfortable with, and if you're listening to that person, do some th something that they're comfortable with, and that's how you learn each other and you can grow as a couple. So after the pool party, I waited and I texted Kimber the next day, but she didn't hit me back until a couple days later. Uh, what am I gonna say? So I set up this date because I was like, look, I really want to genuinely apologize to you. All right, this one's a lot. First of all, if you mess up, don't text an apology to a person, right? Call them up. If they answer, you have the conversation and then you give them a genuine apology over the phone. 
If they don't answer, leave a te leave a message with your apology and, and then send a text and hey, I called you, I left a message, please call me when you get a chance. Now I'm not saying to blow up their phone if they don't answer, call them, call them. I ain't saying doing that. Now, I don't think Jimmy knows what it is to give a genuine apology because quite honestly, I don't think he really feels he, he has anything to apologize about. I think he just knows that he has to, or he felt like he just had to put on a show of apologizing. So I, I, I don't even know what he, he, he was even thinking in that situation. I wasn't surprised when I got the call from Jimmy. However, I need to know where was his intentions when he purposely pushed my buttons. I told him my last relationship, my ex got incarcerated. When the last time you talked to him? Jimmy, Madonna. I can't talk about that. Yeah. Don't go there. If I tell you something in private and you use it against me, you dead to me. I'm hoping that we can recover from this, but once trust has been broken, where do you really go from that? Jimmy just wants to win with Kimber. He goes through the show of a quote-unquote apology and, and it, it's, it's only just to basically get back with her so that he can control the situation. I'm just glad you're still here on this journey. We've been hanging in there. We haven't pissed off the wrong person. <laughs> you don't think you pissed off the wrong person? I hope not. Jimmy doesn't seem to put any value in Kimber's feelings. Cheers, Cheers. to forgiveness. God forgives, I don't, Jimmy. <sighs> you're right. I haven't apologized, so let me take this time. Kimber, in all man code, in all relationship code, in all forgiveness, please, will you forgive me? Give, what am I forgiving you for? Forgive me, give That's me. That's a weak ass apology, like what am listen, I forgiving you for? Forgive me for miscommunication. The worst distance between two people is a misunderstanding. You understand what I'm saying? People think I'm proposing. Nobody <laughs> think you're proposing to me without no ring. <laughs> oh my God, Jimmy, get off the floor. Get off your knees. Just tell me, are you sorry? And what are you sorry for? I got on my knees. <laughs> on your knees without you a blood? ring. You want without blood? A get you no, want blood? not that dirty ass blood I don't. <laughs> house business is house business. You don't talk about things that you discuss privately in a public setting. OK. That's a violation. You're right. I'm going to let you have I, it. I always had it. Because you know what I don't do? I don't argue. He came with this jokey joke, quote unquote, apology. and. You know, it, it, throughout it all, he has yet to really say, hey, I apologize for doing X. I apologize for doing Y. It's, it's, it's really just none of that, all right? I really think that she probably would have been willing to give him another chance and they could maybe rebuild things. Kimber ain't about that boo, from what I can see. However, if she's feeling somebody, remember, go back, you know, the whole, with the dude being in prison or whatever, she, she's a loyal woman from what I gather. So, it, with old boy being locked up, yeah, they may not be in a relationship, but she just ain't gonna turn her back on him. The same situation with Jimmy. She's feeling him for a reason, they're still trying to learn each other. Yeah, her guard is gonna be up, but if Jimmy had came with an honest, sincere, heartfelt apology and shown that, hey, I want to move forward with you, I want to work through this, you know, she would have given him a chance to let things at least play out. Nah, you're gonna have to come stronger than that, Jimmy. I'm a woman. I'm not one of these little bitty ass girls. You're a very strong, I am. loud woman. <laughs> As the arguments and the tension increases, Jimmy instead resorts to hurling insults. And even when he's insulting somebody, he can't even do it in a serious manner. It's like, man, if that's how you're, <laughs> man. It's like he just cannot be serious and then be taken seriously, and that's where he is right now. So as he's doing that, not only is he insulting her personally, he then brings, brings in how she is um, professionally and insults her that way. This is how you do real estate. I never want to do a deal with you. <laughs> I mean, it's like instead of he knows that the situation is over. He cannot just let it go. Instead, he wants to try and destroy her, but ends up looking more foolish as the, the whole situation goes on. It's I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave. Don't even watch, because you can't even handle it, baby. <laughs> Jimmy accepted zero accountability for his actions. I've just made up my mind at this point that there's no more Jimmy and Kimber. There's more fish in the sea. For her to continue to still be this irate about her past, I'm done. I'm pretty sure I said I apologize. I'm pretty sure I said, please forgive me. I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know what other language. Oh, that's right. I didn't say it in Kimber language. These women out here got too much baggage. They're crazy, bro. 
Man, all he needed to do was give a sincere, heartfelt apology, and that probably would have, you know, righted the ship that was sinking oh so fast. But instead, Jimmy talks too damn much and just kept on sending out these verbal torpedoes that did nothing but just blow up the ship that was going down anyway. Man, once again, it's a wrap. Oh, are you? So beautiful. In this world of dating, guys like to feel like someone is very interested in us. Uh, even though the guys are hunters, we also like a little honey in the women as well. And I feel Tundi is giving me all that. Been waiting on this. Me too. I can't stop staring. Hey, look all you want. <laughs> look all you want, because hopefully all of this will be yours. Really? Really. No BS, no game. You know what? I'm speechless. That's very rare. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just being real with you. Wow, it just makes me feel so damn good that this man that I'm into is, you know, telling me that he's really feeling me. <laughs> Sometimes it's so simple, right? When you're feeling somebody, let them know. Now, for women, you still want to be chased. You stand for men, you still want to chase after her, but just let them know. <laughs> it's just that simple. Since I've been here in Atlanta, I've been here like four years. Yeah. During tax season, you know, I go back to my hometown and run my business. Yes. So I'm gone for four months. Planes, trains, automobiles. You want it to happen, you'll make you'll it happen. You'll make it happen. You that's know what right. I'm saying? You know, or you're making excuses. That's right. That's how I feel about it. So yeah. that's not okay. a problem for okay. me. When Alexis and Jimmy were talking, Alexis presented scenarios and Jimmy presented obstacles or, you know, how can we do that or, but, but no, here you see Mario and Tandy and Mario's like, hey, you know, I gotta fly back or I gotta go back to his hometown and Tandy's like, all right, yo, how can we make that happen? You know, planes, trains, or automobiles. That's the difference. Can I taste your pasta? Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I wanna feed it to you. Mmm, mm, that's the best pasta I've ever had. Can you come closer? Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Look, I had to play it off a little bit, play a little cool, you know. But honey, I was waiting for that moment and it was good! Let me get another one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, Mario just needs to focus on Tandy, because honestly, I don't even think there's anything, anything else that Reva can do. It's, on a side note, Mario be serious about his food, y'all. You go back every time they're at a restaurant, Mario be eating. The Mississippi boys be eating. Respect knows no boundaries, like, like, seriously. You and I see the same thing. There's a maturity gap. Jimmy, if that's the guy that I'm gonna choose, mm -hmm. he's supposed to be an extension of you. If you stand with a clown, you a clown. Yeah, very right. true. It's safe to say at the end of the day. Jimmy and Kim are out the room. Once again, I really believe that Jimmy had a chance of redemption. Um, everything that went down, starting at the pool party and his behavior up, um, after that, him meeting with Alexis, him meeting with um, Kimber, he could have fixed that, but he didn't. <laughs> Alexis again! <laughs> I've been busy this week. Oh, my God. I have said from jump that Alexis knows how to play the game. Once again, that's not the same as game as playing games, but she knows how to play the game. All of my athletes, all my competitors out there, y'all know you don't start the game and just blow yourself out so that you don't have anything left to give in the fourth quarter. Everything up to this point, Alexis has been dating. She's been, you know, moving around. But now that we're coming down to the wire, now you see her starting to make moves. <laughs> Y'all, remember what I said about playing the game, okay? A pretty woman doesn't become pretty overnight. She learns how to use her prettiness and knows how to manipulate it to her ends. The same thing goes for a confident, attractive man, all right? They don't just become confident and attractive overnight, all right? You learn how to use that to your advantage, okay? Whether it's um, your sense of humor, whether it's your intelligence, whether it's, you know, just who you are as a person, you learn how to use that. And what you just saw with that look right there is a person that knows what he has and knows how to weaponize it. And once that weapon is locked and loaded, 
ain't really much you can do to negate it. So I'm gonna watch Brent moving forward because that dude, you know, that's what you call a game face. My man's ready. No one really said, hey, he's really feeling me. I'm feeling him. I'm into him. You know, and I th that was- Nobody. That was, no one. The ladies decided, Jimmy's not ready to love. So your journey here will end today. I feel like my disconnect with Kimber had something to do with my demise. I'm sure Kimber was my champion to the girls early on in the journey, but towards the end, I'm sure that her, her feelings changed and she probably began to speak negatively about me. But that's neither here nor there, you know? My character speaks for itself. I appreciate you. You came here to deliver some message. Maybe it was, hey, let me, let me tell you something about yourself. Even though they didn't choose to keep me on this journey, I know that somebody out there is going to choose me for their journey. So far, and Jimmy included, all of the men who have gotten into something one way or the other, from Chica on, have not owned up to the things that they've done. One of the things that I really, really want them to do next season is to not just have nephew Tommy, but also to have some kind of counselor or not really a therapist, even a therapist, whatever the case may be. Because if you're dealing with people in their 30s and their 40s who are trying to find love, if you don't heal yourself from the things that you've been through in your past, one, you're not going to really have good, happy, healthy relationships moving forward, but also you're going to damage and traumatize the people that you come into. So I don't want it to be, I would love for them, I should say, to have a case where these people end their, you know, end the, the show and they found love, but then after that, they get counseling. They get relationship counseling, um, couples counseling, and then that helps them really stay in love because now they're able to deal with the things that they have inside. So Jimmy's journey is over, which means that we have five guys and six women left, all right? Now, looking at them previews for next week, it, the show looks pretty good, so I'm definitely gonna be tuned in. Also, when I am tuned in, I'll make sure you follow me. Um, I live tweet during every episode so y'all can catch me on Twitter. Just follow me at author underscore Chris M. And um, hey, make sure you comment with me and also tell me what you think. During every commercial break of the show, I live tweet my commercial break recaps. Let me know if I'm on track or if I'm off or just whatever. Let me know, Chris. Now nah, that's some BS. And let me know what you think about this review in the comment section below. Um, if you like it, hit that like button. Also, please subscribe and share this video. Um, I do release a new review video once a week, so hit that notification bell so that way you know when it comes out. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks, y'all. See y'all next week. Have a good one.